welcome back guardians we thought we didn't want to let everyone profit over all this divinity drama and everyone keeps missing the most important point which is what the law. where's the law <laughs> the law source uh you know where what? the the law <laughs> that is my name is bife as you can see in here g'day mate <laughs> oh good to be here matt oh Good Look, to be here. This started as a bit of a, a Twitter shit post. I was like, you know what? I think we could use Twitter drama to as like discussion topics for the law. You know, a bit of a prompt, a bit of a reminder. Mm -hmm. And you can you springboard yeah. into knowledge. It's yeah. great. You foolishly said, yeah, we should be doing that. And then I was like, okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Activated me trap card. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is, our, this is our first like twitter drama law video we're not really i don't think we're going to go into the twitter drama we're just going to talk about divinity no law. no yeah, yeah we're just going to use yeah. it as an opportunity to actually talk about the law of the thing yeah because there is law behind divinity there's like a surprisingly large amount for a single yeah. exotic which and is great it's pretty mysterious too there's still a lot of sort of unknown bits and pieces to do with this story so um We'll do our best to, to go through it. This is obviously not scripted. We're just running on memory here and, and some notes. So, you know, if something's not quite right, I'm sure you'll let us know. See how it goes. Mm -hmm. And um, You will inevitably petition in the comments section to uh, do our job for us, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it makes it, makes it better. <laughs> so, where do we start? Kentark well, 3? Kentark 3 is definitely a good place. And it honestly reason why I realized I never ended up making a video on this is lots of the uh, raid law from the raid armor ended up coming out in the season of dawn as it turns out because it didn't initially ship with the raid and I was looking through everything and I realized that's part of the reason why some of this is so well not well known I know you've made a video on this in the past and you're one of the only ones who's done it because yeah I, some of I, it just I... wasn't available interestingly i've never focused on divinity itself even though it's like at the center of this law i've always focused on kentark 3 and even more recently with one of the kentark 3 members lisbon returning in witch queen and some of the law that came with mm. that but um when i looked through my notes it's like i don't think i've just done like the importance of divinity itself so we sort of got to try bring that back up but um yeah, there's so many like law topics that that are like this where they come out late or they or maybe they're just not like high on the priority list like a nice little like side quest and they sort of get mm -hmm. forgotten and like and then you know we get twitter drama and we can bring it, bring, bring it back <laughs> we revisit you know like one of these days we're gonna oh god what was it there was a weapon that had a repeated law tab for months and months it's cartesian coordinate or something that came along and didn't have a thing and i was like well, one day when that gets fixed, you know, yeah. little bits and pieces like this, it's going to be great. And yeah, Divinity does have a really interesting story yeah. that all the repeats in Witch Queen, but I mean, realistically, if you look at Shadowkeep as the beginning of the kind of quote unquote dark part to the light and dark saga in Destiny, it's really interesting because this was the first hint that we ever got that, you know, we'd actively get the choice as players to use some kind of darkness powers. You know, I don't think that uh, there is as distinct a hint to the fact that it is absolutely going to be stasis, but there's absolutely the theme of corruption with the Kentark Three. And yeah, th th so this know. is like the first, I guess, fire team that wielded darkness powers, even though it's not quite confirmed or even really hinted at that it's stasis. But uh, made a well, actually, let's start back at the beginning, right? So they they went into the black garden um mm. under orders of an the exile cryptocrons right the cryptocrons which are like an uh, an exiled warlock order that sort of claim to have seen to the future right they sort of have mm -hmm. visions of the future and there's a um what a a circle the circle of leaders or the leadership is called what the o a naromantic circle uh, they're, they're like the the leaders of the the cryptocrons and they sort of sent the 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 kentark three into the black garden to investigate the origins of the black garden mm. um and, and 
it, it, they fly through the gate, don't they? Yeah, like, they fly through the gate. You can tell from the ship. Yeah. Oh, two seconds. Do you want Do you want some of the best live content that I could possibly provide? I think everyone I have does, that. of course. Give me two seconds. I'll do that. Uh, elevated music. We have a dog. Oh, oh hi, Turbo. Oh, God. Show dog, show dog. We have a tiny dog. Show dog. Have a dog. Oh, I've actually I've seen is... your Twitter with, with the doggo. Oh. He's having his little coffee morning. It's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, they fly through the gate, don't they? Yeah, they fly through the gate. I don't know which gate it is because there's multiple gates right to the Black Garden. Yeah, the, the, it's. I, I've always found it like a fun idea because the, like the entire principle of the Black Garden is that it's not technically in one place. Everyone's like, oh yes, the Black Garden on Mars, and then you sit there, get to Shadowkeep. It's like, no, nah, that was never really how it worked. You know, like Black yeah. Gardens, that kind of dimension out of time that's totally accessible from all these different Black Garden gates, and it's really about where it surfaces next. Yeah. yeah, it's got so they're like, a bunch they, of interesting stuff. They fly in because this this group of warlocks had, I don't know, a vision or predicted the future that a fire team would discover the origins of the Black Garden. So they send mm -hmm. them in, but they don't actually know that the Kentark 3 is that fire team. They just go, well, it could be you. Like, <laughs> Oh my God, yeah, no. It's, it's basically in. being like, hey, give it a try. <laughs> just see what happens. Go into like unknown space time, fight the Vex. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 God, they specifically like prompt um, uh, Rakana the warlock with that information too, don't they? Yeah, God. she said she says something like, "Oh, will be," or like the way they worded. She's like, "Huh? Like not guaranteed?" Like, nah, it's not guaranteed. <laughs> you might, it might, it might be you. It might not be you. Like, okay. And I, I guess the the warlocks also talk about how. There's like a veil or something to do with the black gun that makes it difficult to predict mm. the future in that area. So they're like, oh, it's very cloudy. It sounds a bit like a scam, to be honest. <laughs> like, so I don't know. <laughs> um, so wait, there was, there was, like, there was yeah. three people in the Kentark team, right? Mm -hmm. um, Titan, Warlock and Hunter, uh, Yardam 4, Lisbon 13 and uh, uh, Rakana. Rakana. Rakana being the Warlock who... The name makes me think of an Awoken, which I think is... I don't know if they confirm that through some subtle description, but Yardam 4 and uh, Lisbon 13, uh, the Titan and Hunter respectively, obviously Exos. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. two Exo fire team, one Warlock who is human or Awoken. I feel like I've ever Awoken given the name, but yeah. Yeah. And wait, I think Lisbon... It was Lisbon and Rakana that was sort of in a romantic relationship or partners or at least hinted at that they enjoy each other's company more than <laughs> I don't know, yeah I and, it, and there's like this really interesting divide with that too as time goes on because when the like there is this big inciting instant through the law of that but at a certain point in time there's this moment at which Lisbon basically gets split from the group and at that point it's basically Rakana and Yardam sort of sitting there and being like yeah, no, we need to get the heck out of here. I think at this point, Lisbon is the one holding the divinity and uh, inevitably things go wrong with all of that in question. Yeah, so they, they fly through the gate, they go into the, the Black Gun, discover its origins, and they essentially discover like a, a faction of Vex worshipping divinity. For whatever, <laughs> for like, we don't even know why. And they, at first, they're like, oh, they worship me the black the the black heart. I thought that was dead. And they're like, nah, it's it's an object. It's divinity or whatever this thing is. And right. we don't really know much more about. It. They say, oh, is it Vex origin? She's like, maybe. I don't know. But the Vex are worshiping it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, ir the irony of this whole Twitter drama is divinity canonically is very it's OP. <laughs> Worship by the Vex. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is indeed OP, and also kind of inspires sudden insurrections of darkness. So any toxicity that may have spawned from the drama, yeah, it's totally canon. I actually think 
destiny's breaking the fourth wall because what happens next is what lisbon holds the gun and he ends up turning on his fire team that's mm -hmm. exactly what's happening in our reality <laughs> Exactly. Divinity's it was turning on people. It could have helped you. You know, this uh, this thing is like the one ring, according to Boromir. You know, this is something that could absolutely be used. But no, in reality, this is, yeah, this, this was just designed to divide us as much as it was us. to bring us together. Yeah. <laughs> but the whole mm. the whole thing about, so they, they get in there, they get the gun, they get Divinity. They don't really know why this faction of Vex are like worshipping it. And right. It, and then they, I'm pretty sure the witness makes contact that he like doesn't, I don't think it says oh, the yeah, witness. Oh yeah, 100%. They get like whispers and they make a bargain and then they get darkness powers, right? Or, and uh, Yes, because it's, um, they hear a bunch of different voices and there's even the notes from each of them. Uh, I think it's Rakana. Yeah, I'm reading it here just in the, the uh, Ishtar thing that I've uh, pulled up. At first, it's this thing of like everyone starts subtly hearing, and then um, Rakana basically sits there and is like, uh, you know, do you hear something? Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, they all uh, talk about like hearing a whisper of some sort. And like, I think one of them says, what what did it offer you? But we don't, mm -hmm, we don't, uh, we don't know what the offer or the bargain was. But from memory, after that, they, they start wielding like darkness powers. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I can't remember who exactly it is, but there's one of them. Oh goodness! Turbo wants in, and now he wants out. <laughs> Interruptions. Uh, yeah, one of them. Uh, one of them wants. About. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, I have two trains of thought that were going, and one of them was let Turbo out, and the other was Law things. <laughs> now I'm like, oh god! Doggo's okay, interrupted Law ideas. Like, Damn it, Turbo! How could you with your cuteness? I'll be one sec. Oh. Totally scripted content, ladies and gentlemen. Mm, got him. Morning, Doggo interruptions aside. Yeah, there's the um, there's the note with one of them where that some of them aren't sure how to feel about it. I think Rakana is uh, is kind of distressed with some of it, and I want to say that it's. Yardum who says, why shouldn't we use this power? Mm. You know, and it's partly referring to the power that's just been gained, but also kind of referring to divinity. Uh, right. And it's, I think it's around about that point that Lisbon kind of betrays them. Yeah. The whole irony with divinity is the warlocks, the, the, the circle predict that divinity is dangerous to Rakana, and then because I guess they're in a relationship, she trusts Lisbon, she sort of advises him to hold the weapon, which ironically mm. then he uses to kill her. <laughs> yeah. Divinity. Massive crit spot. I mean, what happened? where's the crit spot on a guardian? <laughs> it's the whole thing. Have to uh, find out by running it in trials. I'm pretty sure you, I've seen can fire teams put, do that too. Can you put crit spots on guardians with this? Oh, 100%. 100%. I like, don't think I've ever seen it. it. Yeah, it's it's surprisingly uh, it's the great way to counter glaive blocking because the crit spot is outside of the block shield no of the glaive, way, so really? you do a huge amount of damage. Yeah, it's it's hilarious. That's pretty like, memey. That's pretty memey. Oh, wow. and also kind of an ironic counter to a lot of it too, um, considering the nature of divinity. I think also something that's worth remembering with this stuff is that the uh, uh, yeah the whole thing is. Um, it's worshipped originally by the Vex, which of course, you know, to a certain extent, makes some sense given the way the Soul Divisive operate and their relationship to darkness and how they bound themselves to it. But, you know, it's still kind of an assumption to say that it is the Soul Divisive immediately, although Black Garden and all that. Yeah, the, I, th I the think thing that right. yeah. the, the thing that jumps out at me, though, from all of that is... Um, even if you look at that relationship of how it interacts with glaives, which totally is not, I'm, I'm imagining is not how it's built in the lore. It's very interesting to see an artifact of darkness uh, turning the tide against another artifact of darkness. Mm. I know, because if you if you look at it, it totally looks as though it's Vex tech melded with the pyramid's own kind of um, technology, which I imagine is very much the point of it being called divinity. 
Yeah, they're... I'm pretty sure in the lore tab, doesn't it refer... You know how, like, movies, like, you never say the title of the movie in the in the movie itself. <laughs> but I think, yeah, huh? it, like, you know, like saying, it's our destiny. Oh, it does say divinity in uh, in the lore tab as well. This is this the object, this divinity. Um, I've never really thought about the significance of its name before, which mm. probably would be a good place to start if I'm going to write a law video. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's uh, it, it's probably just in this, it's down the same line as the uh, the entire thing of the Soul Divisive on that front. Because if you're looking at, uh, if you're to understand the way the Soul Divisive operate as they're basically trying to improve the future of the Vex, of their subtype, by bonding themselves to darkness and more specifically the witness because it's a power that supersedes their own and so they learn the articles of faith to survive as a mechanism and a calculation but if you sit there and you look at any object of darkness it makes a certain degree of sense that you would then sit there and refer to it as a divinity because it is beyond them it is beyond their calculation and therefore it is an object of their worship and then, you know, considering Garden of Salvation is the way it com comes from, it makes more sense then that bosses within there are named things that have very religious connotations, you know? You have the Angelics as those big Hydras. Uh, fanatics have always been a thing for the Vex, but it's very fitting there that they do have fanatics within that entire um, series of encounters. And then, of course, you know, the bosses, Consecrated Mind and Sanctified Mind, all very religious contexts. To mm. consecrate something is to make it holy ground and to sanctify something is very much a similar part of the process it's all about making these things holy closer to the divine so it makes a lot of sense then that divinity is vex technology that's fused with darkness which is very much what it looks like you know it looks like we've got radial area in that damn thing at least well, i mean you look at the crit spots i never really thought about it. the crit spot looks very vexy too you know oh like, yeah 100 the, the mm -hmm. particles and stuff come out um uh, Mm -hmm. Damn, I see. Look, I always go, ah, oh, that's too hard. I'll let Bife cover that. <laughs> all the names and stuff. Like, eh. The whole religious, like, yeah. worship stuff is all about. The only thing that I really ever sort of cover to do with that is when they say, you know, the Vex just wor worked out that worship was the most effective thing. So that's what they did. They, like, they, mm. they started worship. And I guess that's the whole, like, appeal of this gun is like, well, they worship divinity. So, like, the consequences of that like for a, a, a race like the vex to worship that kind of weapon means that it's a uh, bit of a big deal mm -hmm, absolutely and i mean you know like this i think the most amazing thing is that you look at divinity and you have to look at it in the context of other solutions that the vex have to their big problem which is how do they survive until the end of the universe how do they create um a state where in every timeline they're the victors and the fact that divinity ranks up there with literally altering the timelines aka vault of glass and you know predicting the future with calculating engines and things like the whole panoptes curse of osiris storyline you know you have all of those ridiculous mathematically founded logical plans that are based around the intrinsic mathematics and science of the universe and then you have this and that's such a, a brilliant contrast because it's not just about divinity itself it's about the idea of faith and the fact that they're throwing that up there as something that is as powerful it's not really about that it's about bonding themselves to a paracausal force the framing of it i think is a really interesting one because it's almost something that it almost invokes fear you know like if you, if you sit there and think about something where you can logically explain it away, it becomes a little bit less terrifying. Mm. But explaining away something like faith that, that's been born out of the Vex, like, we can do it because we understand paracausality. But in the base notion of it, like, what do you mean these robots that previously believed in logic and a uh, pure solution to the universe are worshipping this? Why are they worshipping this, you know? Like, there, is a, there is a very threatening undertone with that implication on its own like if these things are worshipping a higher power why are they worshipping a higher power and how do they know it's a higher power you know yeah. the more we talk about it the more I love the irony of like the power of this weapon that's 
you know, brings Guardians together to take out bosses by making this massive crit spot, but then breaks a fourth wall reality and it's like <laughs> dividing real Guardians. <laughs> I mean, dude, it's so on point for all of Destiny it's stuff too. It's fourth yeah. wall breakings. Yeah, yeah, it's totally a thing they've done before. Yeah, like, Savathun, all over the place. breaking out of the game. Savathun, the oh. Ahankara, the Nine, like all these different little bits and pieces of lore 100% have broken the fourth wall and yep. in different ways here or there. So yeah, did we, did we, did we miss, so back to Kentar 3, Lisbon kills uh, Brikana with, with, the, with the gun, with Divinity after they've already sort of made these bargains with whispers which we're assuming is the is the witness and this i'm interested to hear your thoughts on this because lisbon goes to basically kill himself kill his ghost and then and then sort of says like the secret will die with me mm -hmm. do you remember do you remember that and what are your thoughts on do you think he's hiding he wants to like lock um the dark powers away he doesn't because because we do know that Rikana and um, the other one, uh, Yardam, uh, Yardam wanted wanted to take this knowledge outside the Black Garden, and Lisbon was sort of against that. Or do you think he mm. just had this moment where he turned on his teammates, and then that was the secret? Like, I want to keep secret that I've killed base my teammates confined here, and he couldn't live with it or whatever. It's a good question, and I think. Um... I think that it, it's going to sound a little bit weird, but from different uh, players' perspective within the like context of Destiny as a universe, not players as in players of the video game, but within different players' perspective of that, I feel like different goals were accomplished. I think from Lisbon's perspective, absolutely, he wanted to hide the power and make sure that no one else had it, because there was indeed that, I think there's that clear perception of saying, hey, you know, this is not okay. This is a power that we shouldn't have, and this is a power that is dangerous for us to wield. Mm. Because I, th you know, I think it's very clear that everybody recognizes that it is dark power, and that it is something that is rather unnatural. I think, however, we need to also look at this from the perspective of the witness, where you need to look at the end game for what the witness is trying to do, which is, I think, realistically all done in the context of its war against the traveler. So if you look at it from that perspective, three guardians here corrupted with darkness, I mean, that's a win already. But then it gets to observe this little microcosm of what goes down when that corruption happens. And in a strange way, it's what happens later down the line when we all start claiming stasis. So Lisbon, even though he has that power, makes the note of saying this power cannot be shared, it can't be spread, we mustn't let other people use it, and then goes out of his way when the time happens to present itself and makes the judgment that it's not going to be able to be kept contained, he goes out of the way to kill his two fire team members. Which, if you look at it from the pure perspective of how do I sow dissent amongst the rank of my foe, it's a genius way of doing it. You know, you have people that have followed in those exact footsteps, and, you know, people like members of the practice. Praxic order like Arnor come to mind for certain. Mm. Then you look at the trial story with characters like Shayura. Um, I think I think that realistically, that's kind of the end goal of what happens with the question of both the dark power that was gained through the bargain, but also with divinity itself. And I think that's kind of the perspective that Lisbon maybe thinks of when he's saying, you know, like no one else should be able to access this kind of power. And, and thinking of the bigger picture. It's interesting it's that you that's, like, say yeah. it like that because he ends up talking to a doppelganger, which we assume is the witness, like we've met a, right. our own doppelganger, who convinces him to not kill his ghost. And then he does leave the Black Garden. So it sort of fits a little bit with what you're saying with maybe the witness, you know, allowing these dark powers, little microcosm to see what happens when guardians get dark powers and how they turned on each other. And then basically let it escape <laughs> uh, the Black Garden with Lisbon, convinced by the witness, right. who then yeah, eventually came up in Witch Queen, right? Which yeah. was like and, a bit of a surprise. And it's it really, all things considered, it does make me wonder whether the witness doing that was purely out of the point of corruption or whether there is also a larger point to prove 
Because we've got to remember that these two entities, the Witness and the Traveler, or the Gardener and the Winnower, if that story holds true, they're operating on a scale that's way bigger than just the individual. So you have to think of Lisbon not just as an individual that's now wielding dark power, but also as an individual that is kind of there making a statement, you know, and, and is there effectively acting as a bit of a test. You know, the Guardians are important in this respect because it was the Traveler's answer, you know, is the Traveler's solution to the final war. And in many ways, it's, as the Witness would say, final card to play. But what happens if you basically take the card and say, actually, that's an Uno reverse and I'm using it for you, you know, like th there's, a, there's a bunch of different implications there. And it's very important, I think, just from the pure kind of philosophical side of if these guardians are meant to be perfect and are meant to be protectors and I can corrupt them with darkness, doesn't this further prove that the traveler is in fact wrong about everything and that, you know, every point that it has been striving for is incorrect and I'm only more correct as the witness. You know, there's a, there's a whole yeah. lot that needs to be taken into account. There's a, you know, obviously Bungie's been playing a lot with, you know, darkness is not necessarily bad or, or evil and wielding it as a tool. Uh, and then I think it was Witch Queen's Collector's book that came up with this idea of, you know, darkness restores memories and w the, the light wants you to like forget and that kind of stuff. Mm. Which memory yeah. comes back into this story again, but it, it is actually a bit opposite of what you expect with darkness um, allowing you to... Re well, so Lisbon, when he talks to the doppelganger, which we assume is a witness, says that he wants to forget, right? And that's how he comes back into Witch Queen. So he, he forgets everything that happened in the Black Garden. And then mm. he's in the law book, whatever one you get for the... The altar of reflection and he's one of the characters like investigating the altar of reflection oh yeah and he, he has remembers. memories yep. the memories come back to him about ricarda who was in a relationship which the, the key words being the blue eyes he keeps remembering her blue eyes and, and this mm -hmm. kind of stuff yep and he, he becomes obsessed with the altar because he keeps for, as soon as he leaves it he forgets but he comes back and he remembers um and it sort of just ends there like it is i think it says something about whispers of the witch queen we don't know mm -hmm. like if he's sort of being manipulated or whatever but it just sort of like he remembers what happened when he's at the altar leaves forgets again and they sort of put this sort of fishing line hook in the water to bait us with <laughs> whispers of the witch queen essentially that's sort of been talking to him um i don't know i don't know if that's like the witness or if it was savathun or or really why they brought him back in. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's all part of a side bite. We needed the divinity drama. Wait. Wait for the new law. <laughs> Random. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Can you imagine um, if they had like lined up some divinity like law and they just happened to release divinity law like after all this and everyone was like, bro, you just did that because of all the Twitter drama. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i feel you know what in eight years of destiny i feel like that must have happened at least once you know Maybe. like oh, there must yeah. have been at least one unfortunate timing release where it's like well this thing's hot guess we have to release the laura behind it oh no this is gonna be bad <laughs> just i don't know what that ends up being but i imagine it's got to be a thing at some point i just don't know what it is they do like making fun. They there's a lot of tongue in cheek, more more recently with sort of making fun of like or breaking the fourth wall and making fun of the community in a nice playful sense. I feel like they they get their revenge sometimes with like hiding some <laughs> some some uh, tongue in cheek in the in the law. What was it? I think it's the uh, it's either in Forsaken or the season of the Lost where Petra goes to the tower and says that. You know, guardians are welcome in the Dreaming City for certain operations. I've got to presume it's Forsaken because that fits better. But, you know, they talk about everyone in the tower and it's like everyone stopped and turned to Pet Revenge. Two guardians playing with the purple ball stopped yeah, playing with yeah, the purple yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was silently looking at her. It's just like, yep, yep. nope, that's 100% a lobby full of players right there. <laughs> You know, the mm. only thing we haven't spoken about, and I was meaning to have a quick look at this, but I didn't get a chance. Um, is there any... Uh, I don't know if you remember. Like, the actual quest to get Divinity, 
like the things you do in the black garden is there any significance to those events because obviously we get so, divinity so does that hmm. mean it got left behind or is that a little bit disconnected from the law i honestly can't remember so it's a lot of breaking ciphers you have the various different puzzles where you're connecting the different bits of energy um to the different diamonds that you will find right, throughout the yeah. thing you have that one puzzle at the end but it all seems very vex like if you get what i mean and it does I, it's not entirely clear why all of that is but it seems very clear that it's not related immediately to anything that lisbon did right you know i I don't think... Did it say that Lisbon took the divinity out of the um, Black Garden? Because I know that the Witness just, um, convinced him to spare his ghost, but I don't think any word is ever made on divinity aside from, yeah, I, you know, he shot Rakana. Yeah, I don't think so either. I'd have to go back and check it, but from memory, I don't think it says it either way. I don't think it says it that it got dropped and left behind or that he took it with him, so... I mean, if, you, yeah. well, I mean, if he if he asked to forget, then maybe and maybe he left it behind, right? Yeah, maybe he left like he forgot about it all, sort of deal, and left it behind. Maybe just sort of mm. I don't know, zombie <laughs> walked out of that garden, just forgot everything, like because uh, I because I guess divinity would remind him, like, uh, to a sense. Yeah, right? it would it would have to be, uh, or if, even if it didn't, he'd ask questions about where the heck did this gun come from? Yeah, and I feel. I feel like that might be our best kind of assumption, really. I, you can't even say conclusion, because, yeah, it would end up being an assumption that if it was left behind in the Black Garden, it was returned to its place of importance by the Vex. And at that point, you know, you have to defeat the Divinity Cipher and all that stuff to actually get it. And after that, you know, you defeat their Sanctified Mind at the end. And after killing Final Boss, you get Divinity. So, it, mm. it, you know, I feel like that one maybe ends up making a bit more sense but the reality is it's one of those moments of like gameplay and lore don't always perfectly overlap you yeah, know the way so. the way i look at it is it's like d2 king's fall you know like touch of malice is now a random drop but og quest touch of malice in oh. d1 oh very much not and so, good. so much lore like oh my goodness the entire idea of hey to get this exotic you need to gather 45 calcified fragments sounds like busy work until you read them and you realize oh no that's the point. I was meant to understand this before I got this weapon. These things are the blueprint. This leads us to it, you know? Yeah. Like That's some of my favorite yeah. lore, Touch of Malice, and how that all comes together. So good. Mm. We should probably yeah. wrap this up. Final thoughts? Anything else? Have we missed anything? Uh, no, I've, I don't know. I mean, I, th I think that Divinity, as far as its existence is concerned, is an excellent thing. I'm speaking purely from the perspective of the law. Just enjoy. Just remember, <laughs> canonically, OP. Canonically, mm. divides fire teams, <laughs> divides the community. Mm -hmm. It is living up to its law. If you want another buff, mile, and hot take, go start some <laughs> Twitter drama about some weapon. Maybe you'll get another episode. Okay. Up next time is Touch of Malice 2 OP. Yeah, we'll find out with you yeah, next time. So, someone starts some shit about Touch of Malice. We'll talk about that. <laughs> oh, okay. it's, it's going to be that or it's going to be something or other. Um, you know what we need to do? And I've just realized it. The next time one of these things comes up and it will happen because it, yeah. it's a regular rotating thing. Yeah. We need to do the Telesto. You know what? I've that's realized not bad. It. Yeah, that's, you know, that's like, just good. Harbingers. Yeah. Harbingers. Yeah. The actual moon of Saturn, all the stuff yeah. to do with the queen. Yeah, we, we got some, we got some okay. stuff to roll through there. Okay. All right, next time Telesto breaks the game, we make a Telesto video. <laughs> nice. So easy. Content. <laughs> uh, do you want to get, do you want, can we, can we get a My Name is Bife sign off to finish? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, hey, thank you everyone for watching. If you have any thoughts and uh, comments of your own, go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section. Go ahead and subscribe to both of our channels. Uh, that is youtube.com slash mylandgames and youtube.com slash my name is Bife. And if you have enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. But as per usual, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for us. And then in the meantime, my name has been my name is Bife, Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you starside. My name is, my name is Marlon. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah.